Gina, first of all, don't feel bad because even in support calls, we talk to people and they'll, they'll start to the point of almost when my cue box, my quick box cue, you know, <laughs> oh, forget it. So, uh, and thank you, um, Casey, for sharing that because it's interesting in our experience, we've actually been, we've been learning along the way about different uh, use cases for cue box, which we enjoy. So. Like, for example, we've had a lot of point of sale users that have opted to use QBox just for the reason you described. They have a remote owner that doesn't want to visit the location every day, so they're able to update that particular copy, get the updates synced to them via QBox. Uh, but we've just, we've found all these different, back today I had a conversation with a gym and they have horrible internet. Well, guess what? People with lousy internet like QBox because while they're working in the file, they still have the performance of their local environment, and maybe the sync takes a little bit longer based on that internet speed, but so what? They're done working, and they move on to the next thing. So, so thank you for bringing that up. We've had some unique use cases that um, have really worked well for QBox and helping those folks out in addition to just the regular collaborative uh, relationship. So. I actually started using QBox because um, I was managing a client file in um, Dropbox because the client was using Dropbox as her for her business for everything. And I would do work. She would do work. And I'm like we would lose all this information. I'm like, what is going on? And I couldn't figure it. And then I realized we had conflicting copies in okay. Dropbox. And the day that, I believe it was on Gina's hangout when we were doing um, Google Hangouts. You demoed it, somebody mentioned it, and I literally fell in love. I mean, madly in love. And I said, oh, this is a game changer. And I was able to get it installed, get it on my client's computer. We got the file in and we have not had any problems since. Any issues we had was it is always something external that, you know, it's somewhere else, but it has never been um, QBox. And then I use um, QBox for myself, for my business, because what I do is I have a laptop at home. So I've loaded my data file at, from my own company and I can actually work on my, um, on my own data file at home. So it's, it's really, it's, it's just, it has changed, it has changed everything for me. So I really, truly love it. When I, and when I say I love it, I love it. Like, <laughs> I want to add that when you do log in via QBox, it's so much better than like remote login. Like if you had, I don't know if anyone's used log me in or those other ones, the computers need to be on, yeah. the people need to be not on. You don't have any of those problems with QBox. You just, e you're either in and locked and you've got the file or you're in and you're not locked, but you're notified of that and you can look at any report that you want. You can download any, you know, information that you want. You can, you know, print reports. You know, you just can't actually change any files. So even that is is a big benefit to me. Yeah. Excellent. And we did have a, a couple of questions. Allison's responding to them, but I'd, I'd like to mention them for the group. Um, first of all, there, there's always a lot of confusion around multi-user and QBox. So we did release something that originally was called a group folder, now called an MU folder, which there's a little cue box secret. MU means multi-user. So, anyway, so um, if you have a situation within one local area network where you have people that need to work on the file simultaneously, then in the world of cue box, you can set up what you call an MU folder, which you can find information about them in our help, so you can chat or call us. But, but that doesn't change the locking and syncing rules with the remote shared users. So those remote folks are still subject to when the lock's available and when the changes are synced from that group that are using the file in a multi-user mode. Um, and the other question, someone asked, does QBox work with enterprise? And the answer is absolutely yes. In fact, that's another user group that doesn't have a whole lot of options available to them for several reasons, inventory, file size. So with QBox, they can share an enterprise file with a remote location as well. Um, so as long, just keep in mind again, that each user has to have a corresponding year and version of that particular uh, QuickBooks program. Um, but, but they can use QBox to share an enterprise file. So yes, they can. So I'm sorry, I cut you off there, Tina. 
Well, I was going to talk a little bit about the multi-user function. I do have a client that's in multi-user, and they called me frantic. They were really upset. They didn't know what was happening. Why is QBox not syncing? Well, when I went in and investigated everything, it was not QBox. It was actually QuickBooks and their internal server not doing the multifunction properly. So I have never had an experience where QBox did not work. It's always worked for me, and that's wonderful. Okay. And I, I second that. I have never had an issue where QBox did not work. It has always been an external program doing something it shouldn't do, but you know, QBox has 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 done what it's it said it would do, and, and in does my it really instance, well. It kept the client from overwriting each other's files. Okay. In that instance, so big help. So now, so now, right now, I have to put the disclaimer, Keybox is not perfect. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, but we provide excellent customer support. So, you know, and, and to be very honest, the majority of calls we get, it is related to some other system conflict, um, maybe an antivirus that's acting up and doesn't want to play nicely with Qbox. But once in a while, there is something quirky that happens, and that's why we like to make ourselves available. And make sure if you have something that doesn't look right to you, if you see on your date your file hasn't been synced in a while, just give us a call. We're happy to help you. Um, most problems are easily resolved, but we'd rather help you early on and have it be more difficult down the road. And um, There's also some kind of cool backup fail safes that have been built in over the last year that not everyone's available. Like, for example, you know, all of us once in a while forget to lock a file. And then you go into that panic mode when you spent six hours and someone else entered one check and overwrote your copy. We have something called a recovery copy. So all is not lost. You know, give us a call. We have history. You have 20 versions you can roll back to. So if somebody inadvertently upgrades to another version, you're not stuck. We can help you roll back to that previous version if needed. So, so when you run into those situations, because, again, I hate to say it, Keybox is not perfect. It's close, but it's not perfect. Um, give us Linda Russell says it can be used to rescue imperfect people when they <laughs> mess up. <laughs> yeah, and we, we're imperfect here too, so we can relate. <laughs> you know, Chris, one thing you uh, haven't mentioned that we should not overlook is that not only will QBox store the QuickBooks file and keep it in sync, but it's a great place to also store documents. So I was uh, at a Woodard group meeting on Monday and people were discussing how many of the free online storage um, sites like uh, Dropbox and Box and OneDrive, if you have the free version, it's actually not encrypted and not particularly safe for saving documents. But you can save documents in your QBox folder um, for emergency storage and it is safe. Yeah, thank you very much for bringing that up. Um, and I actually wasn't aware the free versions didn't have the same level of encryption, but each QBox sync folder actually has 10 gigabytes of capacity, which is kind of cool because uh, as Casey mentioned with QBox, it syncs not only QuickBook files, which is the reason we assume most, if not all of you are here today, but any of the Office formats, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Access, and also image files. So. It's extremely helpful if you want to you know, run a report out of QuickBooks, it's in a PDF format. You can just throw it in the same QBox folder and, and those files sync literally in the blink of an eye. They'll have it you know, within a few minutes. So that way you can share the report or you can look at it at the same time together. You open your copy there up in there. So, so yeah, very, very good point. Um, you can also share multiple QuickBook files in a folder if you need to. So if you have a particular client or um, you, for some reason in your business, are setting up different files, maybe for different properties. You can share multiple QuickBook files within one team folder if needed as well. So thank you for, for mentioning that. I do use, I do use it. Um, I have an architect client and we do progress, um, pro progress invoicing. Okay. And we have a master Excel file that she updates. And then we have multiple sheets for each project. And in, in, in the real world, in the in a perfect world, it would sync and mask the mask, you know, anything we make. Anytime I make changes to the individual sheets, it would sync to the master. Yeah. But one, Mac, Microsoft OneDrive, is that what it's called? Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, that has been the problem that has been causing us to cry. 
<laughs> and we can't figure out because she doesn't even react. She didn't know that she set up a OneDrive with Okay. Microsoft. So she can't figure out how to move and get rid of oh, and move everything out. So we're kind of stuck. But I can I can make changes to the individual sheets. It will then sync to the master, but I can't open the master to, okay. to because I keep getting that Microsoft problem that I need to sign in to be able to access it. And it's only because the files are linked. But I can in, I can do what I need to do. So using Excel um word documents pdfs a lot of that stuff anything you need to anything you need to co coordinate or or get real-time information perfect perfect way to to utilize um qbox and that's and that's generally what i what i will do okay can i respond to valerie's question real quick yeah he wants to know <laughs> um with QBox, you do need to have QuickBooks installed on each computer that you're using. You also need the QBox client installed on each computer. That's correct. Uh, so mm -hmm. if you have a computer at work and you're taking your laptop home, both of them need different um, ver or different licenses of QuickBooks on each computer. That's right. correct. And, and the nice thing about QBox is that the cost model is based on the folder price, but we don't charge for shared users. So I always tell people, hey, you got to come up with another email, which actually yeah. supplies kind of makes people mad sometimes. But uh, we, we say, hey, get a Gmail or something. But Absolutely. all you need is another email because yeah, client I, users I, need to have their own unique ID, which we have yeah. in emails. But but we don't charge for separate shared users. So just as you mentioned, if they have a home computer and a client and um, the computer in the office, it, it's still the one price for the folder itself. There's no additional cost for shared users or shared computers. And the whole email situation thing is if you have a um, branded email um, branded um, email for your company, you can set up teams where everybody with, with that at your company's name, you can use those, you know, those um, emails. And so Valerie is asking, multi-user will only work when we are both working at the office? The answer is no. If you're in a multi-user environment, the multi-user is treated as one person or one. I'll, I'll let you go with that, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I like what I have to work. I wish I had my golf clubs in here. You know, you're exactly right, though. And that, that's... I think, you know, unfortunately, sometimes we always want to make sure people don't get frustrated and they understand. But the reality is the multi-user is for, again, I was telling someone the other day, we don't change anything within that local environment. You still have to have a server or network drive to share it. Um, everyone needs to have access to that same drive. So all QBox is doing is allowing everybody to have in that local area network the QBox messaging or what we call the QBox Explorer and they can access the file individually, but everyone away from that local area network still is subject to the same locking and syncing process. So, so everyone within the network has that functionality, everyone outside has the same key box rules. So and then the last thing before we get on to our drawing is MacBooks and Windows, you can share a file, one computer with the MacBook, one computer with Windows, doesn't matter. You're on QBox, you're fine. Yeah, so, um, and I think someone's already responded maybe that, so in the, in the world of, which I always joke because like TS lives like a block from Apple, so I still don't, I don't get it yet. But anyways, um, <laughs> we don't, we don't, Qbox doesn't support QuickBooks for Mac and it doesn't support um, uh, the Mac operating system. So we have a large number of Mac users, but um, as someone mentioned, they're using what you would call an emulator, I call it a partition drive. So on their computer, they're literally running the Windows operating system and the Apple operating system. So QBox and QuickBooks for PC are on the Windows side, and that works. So if, if they want to have that functionality, most times, they're, as I tell people, they usually have other programs that only work in a PC environment, so they've already decided to use that emulator or that partition drive. So they have other programs there that won't work. Um, so, uh, but, it, but it absolutely will work on the Windows side, even on that computer. So I am going to do a quick segue. We do have some drawings to do. Um, for those of you that didn't hear, first of all, we're wrapping up, <clears throat> excuse me, one of our associate contests right now. So we're going to have our drawing for second or third place, which we actually have 
Allison's going to have to help me here. And then we also have two Amazon gift cards for all of everyone else here that's joined us today and is not currently an associate with QBox. So um, she's frantically giving me the results. So drum roll, please. <laughs> Okay, so it's coming up on my electronic screen. So our $100 winners for our third place in our associate drawing are, and I don't know if they're here today, I know one person is and she told me, uh, MB Ramondi uh, receives $100 as part of our associate contest. Sarah Laidlaw, we all know. Yay, Sarah! And then uh, Marty, I'm always afraid I'll mispronounce her last name, Denial. So you three are our third place $100 winners in our current associate contest. And then second place, coming over my red ticker there. Second place goes to, and what is our second place prize? $300. $300 is going to Margie Monroe. Yay. So she's our second place winner in our associate contest. And then we also have our contest winners for our $50 Amazon gift cards. And those are? Karina Martinez. The first one is, if you didn't hear that, Karina Martinez. And by the way, Allison really should be, don't you? I want to by a show of hands and a show of people responding. Shouldn't Allison be participating? Shouldn't she be in the picture? Yes. Yes. <laughs> She's over there smiling and putting her on the spot. But at least we're going to do the picture thing for sure next month. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. And Larry DeForest. Larry, yay, Larry. You guys all know, I don't know who Larry is, but Larry, congratulations. So, um, Larry's the dragon. Okay, so Allison will be in touch with, with both of you and make arrangements to get you your Amazon gift cards. And so thank you very much for joining us today. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and segue over to my good friend, T.S. Srinivasan, who again joined us today. Um, you already heard his credentials. Um, I actually, you have to go to the website to read his full credentials. I had to pare it down. I told him I have no voice. I can't read the whole thing today. So he's, he's a lot more experienced and credentialed and a much smarter guy than I am. But we're very uh, happy and grateful to have him join us here today. And T.S. is going to tell us a little bit about the current state of our company, Coral Tree, and also where it's going in the immediate future. So, T.S., you have the floor. Okay. Thank you, Chris. And um, sorry if I bored everybody with the, with the long resume or the biodata. Uh, that was not my intent. Uh, do you see me? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So, I just wanted to, uh, I was listening to uh, everybody talk about QBox, and it's really, um, I'm really honored by all the comments you have been making and really gratifying to uh, see that uh, whatever we thought um, about QBox, the kind of functionality we implemented is really uh, being used. Um, I wanted to give you a little bit uh, information about the approach uh, we have taken in addressing this QuickBooks space uh, and why is it is different from the approach taken by other file sharing products like Dropbox and Google Drive and others, right? So when we set out, we said we're going to address the small, medium business market and, and the professional users of QuickBooks, right? And also we said we're not going to simply share the file, but we want to make it um, work for them, right? So we're kind of adapting this entire product to the way QuickBooks works and also to the way the users use QuickBooks. That's very important. So locking is a very important part of this uh, product, so when you lock a file, nobody else can uh, access the file. Uh, they can, uh, I mean, nobody else can make changes to the file, but they can certainly view the file. But if you observed it, the lock message appears only after you successfully log into QuickBooks, right? So that's a functionality that we have engineered to make sure that it works in the natural flow of your events. So you open QuickBooks, you log in with your uh, QuickBooks username and password, then magically the lock message appears, right? So that's the important functionality that we have engineered to adapt to the way QuickBooks works. The second thing you will notice is QuickBooks creates a lot of uh, files and folders um, that sit in your disk drive, but QuickBooks does not sync all of them, right? If you happen to put 
QuickBooks and another uh, file sharing solution, you'll find that all these folders also get synced. Um, but QBox does not. It leaves everything behind in the local drive because these are not useful for the other users, right? So if you open the QBox folder, you can see a lot of search folders, um, a lot of, um, I think there's a connect uh, text file. Um, there are various folders that QuickBooks creates and there's a DSN file uh, uh, and so on. These are not synced by QBox. Only, it only picks two files, the QBW and the TLG file, which are required for sharing this financial information for other users. So number one, it saves uh, your bandwidth uh, because less number of files are synced. Number two, it doesn't clutter up everybody's uh, disk drive with uh, unwanted information. We also built this QBox Explorer. Uh, you don't have to go to the Windows Explorer and look around for the files and all that. The QBox Explorer, we have designed it. It is also the Explorer, just like the Windows Explorer. It has all the functionality of the Windows Explorer. It can copy files, delete files, rename folders, drag and drop files, and so on. But it does, it's there all the time for you to see. So if you are a QuickBooks user and, and QBox is installed, the QBox Explorer is all, always in front for easy access. And we are also using this QBox Explorer to configure the way your QBox works. There is automatic syncing, there is automatic lock, uh, manual lock, uh, and there are other configuration options that you can see under settings and preference and so on. So that is something that we have um, architected in the product so that uh, even if you are uh, not a very tech savvy user, you are able to work on QuickBooks and work on QBox uh, without having to go to tons of manuals and you know, learn the product at length. So, in our mind, uh, people should be able to just learn this, uh, you know, a, a short QBox user manual, a few FAQs, and you should be able to learn the operation of QBox maybe within 15 20 minutes. It also um, Tailor made for QuickBooks in other ways. For example, they were talking about the multi user functionality, right? So if you have a multi user QuickBooks on one of the offices, right, where multiple people are working simultaneously on the QuickBooks company files, and you also have a need to share this company file with somebody who's not in the office, right? That's where QuickBooks comes in. If you're only going to be using QuickBooks in multi user mode and you don't need to share it with anybody else outside the office, then really you don't need QBox. But if you have a need for sharing it with somebody who's not in the office, who's remotely located, then QBox fits in. The way you set up QBox is set up QBox MU on the office side and share it with users who are not in the office. The people who are uh, outside the office can log the file uh, and, and none of the users in the office can work. And when the users in the office log the file, the remote users cannot work. But it works in very nicely without creating this conflicted problem. So it solves the uh, multi-user problem as well. Uh, and then there is QuickBooks attachments, right? So if you are using attachments um, with QuickBooks, uh, as you know, QuickBooks keeps all these folders in a separate folder uh, named attach. And you can copy this attach folder into QBox and also uh, share and enable it on QBox and it'll be all the attachments will, share, will be shared with other users as well. So we've gone, um, uh, we, we have spent quite a bit of uh, engineering effort to adapt this product for QuickBooks and also for the big QuickBooks users are using QuickBooks so that they don't have to change anything that is uh, relevant to QuickBooks and the product is adapted, right? So that is where the difference is. It's a, we, you know, we were to make it a true collaboration product, not just a file sharing. And uh, we want to be now addressing other desktop uh, Markets as well. For example, uh, we are now we did, just did a beta release for Autodesk Revit LT. That is a building design product. It is also a desktop uh, product, just like QuickBooks. Uh, QuickBooks is comfortable when you, when you use it on your local desktop because it has the power of the PC. It has a high graphics resolution. It works very nicely even if the internet is not uh, available. Right, you don't have to go to a, on, um, you know, over the internet and log in and so on. So as long as the QuickBooks is working on desktop, you see the power of the local uh, desktop. You have very, very powerful uh, laptops available now. And at the same time, you have the collaboration mechanism 
using QBox because the complete uh, requirements are taken care of. The same concepts we're extending to uh, products like Autodesk Revit LT, uh, which is a desktop product, and they don't have good collaboration solution. We said, why not target it? So we are building, uh, we're not only doing the file sharing with the lock, etc., but we are building all the associated functionality that a Revit LT user will typically use on his day-to-day uh, use of the product. So we're going to be extending it to uh, other gra uh, other um, design applications like SolidWorks, uh, SketchUp, uh, even on the office side, right? I mean, the, the, the Google Docs and uh, uh, the Dropbox paper and all this address the document editing, et cetera, very nicely. But there are very, uh, there are still a lot of users who li like to edit their Word documents on the desktop, Excel uh, documents on the desktop, uh, PDF editor, for example, PDF is one of the most used files in the world. Right? The most used file types in the world. So PDF editors, and then Microsoft Project, and, and they're addressing all this desktop application requirement uh, completely. Not just file sharing. If there's any associated requirement that is making collaboration a little bit more a better experience, you know, we want you to remain in QBox and not look around for other solutions or things other things that application does. So that has been our goal, that has been our vision. Uh, we continue to expand the number of applications we'll be supporting. And uh, we always have, uh, we always love to get user feedback. Uh, uh, you know, if you think that something has to be different, uh, uh, if you think that we uh, doing something uh, that is creating friction for you to use it, we'd love to hear that so that we can always uh, fine tune the product and make it a pleasant experience for everybody to use the product. Thank you, Tias. Yeah, and, uh, I don't know, he, he, he's on the same internet connection, by the way. He's right down the hall, so I'm not sure his, for some reason, you're getting a little bit jumpy there. So, but I, I think everyone heard and, and I appreciate you sharing. Um, it's interesting to me, too. It's not very often you work with a product where um, Tias and the engineering team are continually even building in features that that necessarily users haven't asked for, but they think about ways to protect security and the backup files. And so, um, so again, QBox isn't a perfect product, but it's, it's just performed very well, we believe, for those desktop users that are looking for a solution to share their QuickBooks desktop file. Uh, and that, that's really, that's been our, that's our first love. That's the group that we work most intimately with. And now, as TS mentioned, we are expanding into some other um, user uh, applications that don't have the ability to share, or don't have even a SaaS-based opportunity like with CAD. So, um, so we'll have more information about that. But, um, but in the world of QuickBooks, and I know some of you have mentioned, we get people coming to us from a lot of different solutions, having previously tried, and, and uh, Gina, Casey, and Misha mentioned some of them, like desktop sharing. We have people that get very frustrated, don't want to kick their client off their computer, get frustrated with the way that it interacts with their computer when they're trying to do more than just a few changes or AGEs. Whereas with QuickBooks, they're working on their own copy. They have local performance. Uh, we have folks coming to us from other traditional file sharing resources. And as TS mentioned, uh, one nice thing about QBox is it's designed to sync and share a QuickBooks file. So we don't have the issues with the creation of conflicted copies. We don't have um, the issue with potential corruption of a file because bottom line is a QuickBooks file is a database file and it should not be synced when it's open and operating. So, so there's a lot of functionality built into QBox that's designed specifically for that desktop application. So, so again, thank you TS for sharing the background and um, thank you for joining us today. We almost are to our third, our second and final drawing, third, our second and final drawing, I'm looking at Allison, and our final drawing for the day is going to be our first place prize for associates uh, contest, and then we're gonna have two more $50 Amazon gift card winners also. So, um, you can tell pressure's on Allison over there. I won't turn the camera, she has 15 seconds before I turn the camera. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if you heard that or not. And no, this wasn't fixed. No, it just so happens that she's, all of you are hardworking associates. But Casey is our first place winner for this contest. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she won our first place prize of $500. So uh, we'll be getting that to you, of course. And then our two Amazon gift card winners for participants are 
Melody Winter. Melody Winter. And Leanne Harmon. And Leanne Harmon. So again, Alice, I'll be in touch with you by email. She'll let you know and, and work on arrangements to get your prizes in addition to the associates. So congratulations to everyone. And a special thank you again to everyone joining us today. Um, at this point, we'd like to go ahead and just open it up for questions. Um, we've had several coming more than usual today. So uh, I'm going to just fire some out. And if any of you like to take them, otherwise, I, you know, we can do that as well. So how long can we start documents on QBox? Can I have various... Annual tax filing reports is my long-term electric storage, electronic storage. I don't know if you want to take that one, T.S. Oh, there's no time limit for uh, storing the documents, right? So uh, you can keep the, is that the question, Chris? Yes, yeah. yeah. The you can keep the document as long as you want. And um, even if you delete a document, mm -hmm. QBox will keep it, keep the deleted version for 30 days from the time of deletion. So anytime you want to, recover it back, you can recover it. Uh, but, but you can keep the document as, you, as long as you want. Uh, okay. The individual documents, there is no time limit. The billing is only for four. Okay. Another question to throw out to the group, which someone already actually answered, but um, can in QBox, can you share Excel files also that can be saved? Yes, you can yes. take Excel files, QuickBooks files. Uh, Word files, PDF, all the files can be in the same folder. You don't need separate folders. The only time you need a separate folder is when you are sharing the folder with a different set of people, right? That's when, because you don't want to show the contents of one uh, folder to another, another set of people. So uh, the, the sharing is done at the folder level. There is no restriction on the type of files that you keep uh, in the folder, as long as it is supported. I mean, the file type supported are given in the FAQ as well as the user manual. Uh, yeah. As in that list, it will be supported. But yes, yeah. Excel, Word, PDF, uh, PNG, JPEG, all types of files to support. Okay. Amisha, you had a comment about Excel. I'm sorry. No, yeah, Excel, um, actually, that's one of the, the files that I use regularly with my architect client because we are constantly updating um, the perfect example is we, you know, there's a project, you know, it's X amount percent complete. I need to know how, what that percentage is at any given time in the month. So I can then create the billing and it varies from project to project to project. So my client will go in, drop the percentage in there. It will sync to my cue box, uh, my, my document. And then I open it and I have the data instantly. So um, that fast sync, I tell you, I love it. <laughs> oh boy, that's an inside joke for all of you watching. So <laughs> she has the medium fast sync, so <laughs> someday. <laughs> one one day I will have I will have turb I will have turbo sync. <laughs> that's right. Just like uh, the QuickBooks uh, file, when you open it, you lock it. The locking works for Excel, uh, Word, um, also Microsoft Access database. Uh, all these files, when you open it, you are able to lock it, even PowerPoint, you are able to lock it, work on it, and um, sync it and release the lock so that another user can lock it and work on it. So uh, the QBox collaboration works for uh, Excel, Word, PowerPoint, and Microsoft Access as well. Okay. Yeah, and that, that's another interesting piece because a lot of folks don't realize that those file types also have the locking and syncing. So PDFs normally you're not editing, you're just bouncing image documents around, but, but for working files, just as Misha mentioned and TS mentioned, um, each user can open, lock it, edit it, close it, those edits are synced to the copy on the shared user's computer. Uh, and one yeah. other, Steven ahead. asking if um, you guys would ever consider using adding stage bookkeeping. <laughs> That's kind of a, that's a, I'm smiling because um, the answer is we've tried. <laughs> so it was presented to them several years ago, actually, I'll say five years ago. And um, TS can give me more of the background, but we actually did the work on our side of preparation for that. But. Right, we needed support from Sage to implement the locking and syncing mechanism and we were not. Uh, uh, there are lots. Think about it. So we put it in the back burner. It is still on our uh, list of things list of uh, applications that we do want to support. Um, uh, it gets a little bit more complicated. Uh, the Sage has hundreds of files in the database. 
while QuickBooks has uh, five or six files and only two files are main files. In the case of Sage, it's hundreds of files. So uh, we did uh, figure out a way to uh, handle it, but we we needed support from them. And uh, at that time, they were going through a lot of changes and uh, we were not the priority for them. So uh, we do plan to approach them again and, and see what the response is going to be. So if any of you out there want to get in touch with Sage and tell them to get in touch with us, we'd be happy to make our product available to them as well. But uh, yeah, so they actually, you know, TS and his team did all the uh, initial engineering and evaluation and testing and it kind of ended there. So, so okay. questions from Gina Palicio. Uh, what is the current pricing? I've been hearing $12 per folder. Is that only on new files? I must be grandmothered in or older pricing. Yeah, so so um, one, one very nice thing too, I mean, we're kind of a quirky company for several reasons. One is that when you call us, you get a live person. And it's funny, um, a few months ago when we um, first released our chat, people were chatting saying, there you go, you don't want to talk to us anymore. No, just scroll down to contacts, click, we're still here. Um, as it relates to pricing, everyone that's ever purchased QBox is still at the same pricing structure they were at the time they signed up. So we literally still have some folks that are on our pricing structure day one when QBox was released. We never modified it or edited it when the pricing was increased. With all that being said, our pricing on the website, we did increase uh, to $12 per sync folder just about a month ago. Still no cost for shared users. And if you are already a QBox user, you're, you're locked into the pricing structure you were. So if you've been paying $9 a month, even if you've created folders since then, you're still at the $9 a month level. And so only the, the newest users are, are impacted by the new price. And I'm gonna say that as the added benefit of having backup, you cannot find a backup program that cheap online. Mm. Um, so just for that itself, it's worth it mm. in my mind. I mean, the sync, the, 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 the real time collaboration is just priceless. I, I, I have no words. It's just, <laughs> you I mean, it's, it's speechless. I know <laughs> it, you, I mean, it, and I, I get so excited when I talk about it because if you are a diehard desktop person, and I know there are a lot of us out there. Mm -hmm. um, this could change how you do business. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. And you, you even accommodate accountants. For those that don't need a sink all year long and only need it for that three, maybe four months during tax season, you yep. offer a price plan for that also. Yeah, and so, so again, I think, you know, it's funny that when you put all the elements together, it's, if you just needed the one element of collaboration, it's still extremely affordable. And people kind of forget, they'll call and say, well, gee, do you have a backup? And my computer blew up. And well, yeah, you can restart a couple. Yeah, we, we have 10, actually. What, um, what, which one do you want? Yeah, and so, you know, we, and, and that's why, too, if people have problems or issues, we encourage them to call us because there's, there's so many built-in features. A lot of times people don't even realize they have as a QBox user. So the history rollback, 20 versions of your file are in the cloud at all times. So you can always roll back to a previous version if you lost something or somebody under something wish they hadn't. Um, that the recovery feature I talked about, a lot of people aren't aware of that. So um, there, there's we believe that it's a, it's a great value for, for the cost. and. And again, you know, we, we're, we're not entirely anti-cloud. We just give you the best of the cloud, allow you to work on your desktop, but still give you that ability to share with remote users. It's nice having a choice and not having one thing kind of forced down your throat um, because every client is different and every client's needs are different. So you can't, you can't cook, you know, have a, a one one pattern and have everybody try to fit in it. It's good to have multiple options available to folks who, who really need it. Yeah, that, that's just so people know too. We, we really, uh, our model with accounting firms are different from one to the other. We have some firms that are, you know, very tech driven and, and they have X amount on QBO, X amount on Zero, X amount on some hosted solution. And then here's these ones they don't have a solution for and they use QBox. 
We have other firms, believe it or not, that every single client is on Qbox. They like desktop. They don't want to go to a hosted solution or SaaS. So it, does, it doesn't matter to us. We're just here to provide, like you said, whatever, whatever fits the needs of their particular firm and their strategy and their philosophy, that, that's what we want to do is, is support them in that effort. So, uh, Okay, well, I think our questions have slowed down. People are off to enjoy. Tomorrow's the first day of fall, by the way. If you, I know we've all been dealing with different goofy weather this year, some more extreme than others. Out here in California, we've been complaining because it's too hot, and that's pretty sad because... Um, what our, our friends and neighbors are dealing with back east is really horrible and tragic. So um, keep everyone in your thoughts and prayers as you think about the folks in the islands and all up and down the eastern seaboard. It's been pretty awful. So, uh, But we again, we, we greatly appreciate your business. We appreciate you taking time out to join us today. Thank you, Misha. Thank you, Casey. Thank you, T.S. Thank you, Dina. Thank you, Allison. Should I put her on the spot one time? Yes. Okay, here she goes. Thank you, Allison. There she is. <laughs> so uh, now I don't know if I'll be able to come back or not, but thank you to everyone. We greatly appreciate you joining us. Just as a mention for next month, our desktop time will be happening on October 18th. And next month we have Penny Lane Kroll, who happens to specialize in working with contractors. And we have a representative from Carico, which is uh, QuickBooks. Um, field service application that, that works in harmony with QuickBooks. So um, we'll look forward to another exciting and interesting desktop time next month. And we hope all of you can come back and join us. And to all of our prize winners, congratulations. Um, Allison will be in touch with you by email to make sure we get that to you. And again, thank you to everybody else. Enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next month. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank Bye, everybody. Everyone.